Hello everyone, in this YouTube video I will be going over how to program a 1D radial basis function using just NumPy. So the reasons why uh, we may want to learn how to do this is one is I know personally for me learning uh, how to implement mathematical concepts using just via NumPy uh, has proven difficult. And another uh, reason we may want to do this is it's maybe useful to have an object that you can train on a very small data set and then generate a new function that will uh, approximately underlie the structure of the data. So the theory behind this is that a Gaussian, Gaussian radial func basis function is defined by this, phi is equal to the e to the minus epsilon r squared. The radial basis interpolation thus is defined as a simple linear combination of this transformation of the Euclidean distance radial basis function. Thus, given a data set of y sub k and x sub k, we can solve for w sub k. And then, knowing the original data points x sub k and w sub k, we can then construct a linear interpolation function that accepts a 1D vector of x sub n and then approximates out to the y sub n. So to make this theory more concrete, let's create a toy data set and function. So first I'm going to go and import NumPy and then import matplotlib. So first I'm going to create two x's. The first one is going to be this x of k right here, and this other one will be an x of n, which will be a, uh, a more uh, granular x vector. So x of k is equal to np.lim space 0 to 1 and I'll take uh, five, five data points. And then x will be equal to the same thing, np.linspace from zero to one, and I'll use 100 data points. Next, I'm gonna define my true function. So my true underlying function will be this. Define my true f of n x squared minus x minus numpy dot cosine of numpy dot pi times x. And numpy is not imported. Thank you. So next, let's go and just uh, take a look at this data and uh, kind of plot it out. So I'll do plt dot figure, fig size equal to 12 by 6. plt dot plot. Let's do x of k true f of n of x of k. We'll use uh, markers on here. And let's give those a little bit of decent size, 15. And then again, we'll do plt dot plot x and then true function of x, and we'll do dotted red lines. And let's see what that looks like. And again, as plt. And let's see what we got here. And then marker size. Let's write marker size. So here we have our function. So the x's represent the five data points that we'll be using to uh, construct our radial basis function interpolator. And this red line is the underlying true function. So let's see how we can get started here. So the first thing we want to do is if you look at here, we have this matrix that is a shape of uh, k by k. And what this matrix right here represents is this radial basis function with the Euclidean distance of each data point from itself from each other. So let's see how we can first uh, create create this Euclidean distance. So we have our x of k. So x of k dot shape is phi. So the first thing you can notice is that if we reshape it to minus one by one and then we subtract it by x of k dot reshape one by minus one, we 
we'll get the difference between the two. And that is due to the broadcasting rules of NumPy that this works. So if you look at the shape, it is a five by five, which is what we want is a five by five matrix. So now that we have the distance of each point from each other, we need to calculate the Euclidean distance of each data point from itself. So in order to do this, we'll first take this result here and square it. And then we'll take the square root of it. And we get our Euclidean distance. So now that we have seen how this is possible, let's go and create a little function for this so that we can uh, use it more generally. So we're going to define our Euclidean distance, and then we'll accept an x and an x of k. Now in the first, uh, whenever we're fitting the model, x of k, the x and x of k are going to be the same shape. But whenever we go on later, as you can see, this will be of x of n, x of k, you know, if we want to, once we have our model fitted. So that is why we have an x and an x of k. So let's go and uh, do this here. Let's just take this function here, np.sqrt, x dot reshape minus one by one minus x k dot reshape minus one, sorry, one by minus one. We'll need to square this. Square. And then let's go back and add our parentheses. And then, of course, let us return this value. Now let's test to see if our function works on the, uh, the data. So let's see. Euclidean distance of x of k x of k and we should get the same answer that we got here and as we can see it is the same so now that we have defined our euclidean distance formula we now need to create our radial base gaussian radial basis function which is this right here so in order to do that we will define our define our gaussian radial basis function and it will accept our, our radius and our epsilon. So what we want to do here is, and we want to return numpy.exponential of minus, minus the epsilon times the radius squared. So now we can feed in our Euclidean distance into the radial basis function. And that should make the transformation of our data set that we need in order to solve for WCK in this formula. So let's test it out here. We can say Gaussian radial basis function of our Euclidean distance of x of k, x of k. So that becomes the radius of our radial basis function. And then we'll give it a epsilon. So let's just for this example use an epsilon of 2. And as you can see, we now have our radial basis function transformation. And it should be a 5 by 5 matrix. And as we can see, it is a 5 by 5 matrix. So it is of the correct shape. So now that we have these two formulas defined, we can now make an object that can fit our data using those two functions transform the data and then with it generate this w of k and the x of k and then from that it can extrapolate any of x of n and determine what the y sub n should be.
So let's go ahead and start creating this class. So our class will be radial basis function interpolator. So it capitalizes radial basis function interp. It'll be an object. Now let's give it an initializer. So init. Oops, not self. Def. Define init as self. And the only thing we'll need to do whenever we define this function is we'll give it an epsilon for the radial basis function. So self.dps is equal to eps. Now the next thing we'll want to do is we'll want to fit the data. So we're going to define fit, and then we're going to give it an x and a y. And just to make this more transparent, I'm going to call this x of k, y of k. Oops, and don't forget the self to make it know there it is. So the first thing we'll want to do is, the first thing we'll need to do is we'll need to save this x of k value. So the first thing I will do is say self dot x of k is equal to x of k. Now that we have our x of k saved, the next thing we'll need to do is apply that transformation that we did in this part, portion right here. So I'm going to call this internal variable called transformation is equal to Gaussian real basis function Euclidean distance of x of k, x of k. And then for the Gaussian real basis function, we need to give it an epsilon. So self dot eps. So now all we need to do is solve for our weight. So now we'll define our weight as self dot weight underscore is equal to numpy dot linear algebra dot solve. And we want to take our transformation as the input of our solver and our y sub k and set that to w sub k. And then we should be done with our fit function. Now I'm going to make this object callable. So I'm going to implement the underscore C-A-L-L -L call thunder method. And this will allow me whenever I call this uh, object, I can treat it as if it's a function. So whenever I call on it, all I have to do is feed it an x of n and it should return a y sub n. So now, whenever we want to call this function, we'll want to do return. We'll first want to transform the data again. So we'll take this in and place it here. And instead of x of k here, we're going to now use x of n for our first input of the Euclidean distance. So we're going to make this x of n. Now, for this portion, we want to return the transformation dot self dot weight. And that should be all that we need for our radial basis function interpolator. So let's test this out. Our model, we'll call it interp, terp, polator will be equal to radial basis function. And we'll give it an epsilon of two. Now, let's see if we can fit it to our xk that we defined up here. So we'll say interp dot fit xk y sub k and we did not define y sub k so let's go ahead and do that right now we'll say y sub k is equal to the true function that we defined earlier of x sub k and we see it is fitted so let's see what our weights are and we see we have our weights and now Let's see if we can call this function. So let's see if we can just call it on x of k first. So we'll say interp on x of k. And as you can see, we have it. Now let's see if we can call it on x. And again, you see we have it there. So now we have these data. Let's see if we can plot it and see how the results look. So I'm going to have a, uh, let's see, we're going to say plt.figure, get a fig size of 
12 by 6 dot plot. So the first thing we'll plot is our original x to k and y to k. Again, let's give those an x here. And then we can plot our x. And then we'll say our interpreter of x. And we'll give this a We'll say dotted red line. Let's see how it looks. Oops. PLT dot plot dot plot. And there you can see we have our interpolated function. So now let's see how it compares against the original function. So let's say PLT dot plot. And this time we'll feed in x. And now we'll feed in our true function of x. Now let's make this a, uh, a blue line. And as you can see, they fit quite well. So that's all I have for this tutorial. Uh, please leave a like, a comment, and if you um, like the material, consider subscribing. Thank you. Bye.